Nicholas, kids have been hurt and even killed every day. Bus drivers across Indiana report anywhere from hundreds to thousands of vehicles ignoring bus stop arms. We showed you the problem last Thursday. And tonight, News Channel 15's Adam Widener continues our investigation with a look at how state lawmakers are working on solutions. One plan makes it easier for violators to receive criminal charges. Another opens the door for school corporations to get stop arm cameras. But 15 finds out uncovered, according to some, even these may not be solutions. It's unconstitutional. You have to be able to prove who commits an offense. Like anybody, Allen County Prosecutor Karen Richards thinks school bus stop arm violations are a problem. We'll get to why she has an issue with proposed solutions in a moment, but first, 15 Finds Out has put cameras on buses, followed others, and joined police on a sting, easily catching stop arm violators on the first try. It happens every day. Hoosier bus drivers reported almost half a million stop arm violations last year, but only around 400 drivers were found guilty for illegally passing a school bus. A staggering disconnect because right now, officers can only cite violations they see firsthand. Sooner or later, someone's going to get hurt. It's left state lawmakers trying to find a better way to catch and punish violators. Representative Milo Smith of Columbus co-authored a new bill that allows school corporations to use an outside company to put cameras on buses that will record stop arm violators. They are not authorized to enter into a contract with a third party company. Why is that? It just nobody thought of it. If we authorize them to enter into a contract with a third party company, there's no upfront cost for them. Here's how the bill works from there. The cameras snap pictures of the vehicle running the bus's stop arm. A bus driver then writes a report on the violation, and an officer confirms the offense. Within 10 days, the owner of the vehicle is sent a citation in the mail. If the owner wasn't driving the vehicle at the time, he or she has to respond with the name and address of the driver who was. The first offense costs violators $300, the second $750, and the third, within five years, costs $1,000. A lot of school corporations are strapped for cash for uh, their transportation, their bus needs. Uh, so what if they're able to raise a little more revenue and they use it in the transportation department, but we also stop people from running stop arms. The company that installed the cameras will get up to 25% of the fines and the rest will be split between the spinal cord and brain injury fund and the school district. That could pose a problem since one camera company we spoke with says it usually expects between 50 and 75 percent of the fines. It's not about the money or what we're going to do with the money. It's about public safety. This isn't the first time Representative Smith has tried to get more cameras on school bus stop arms across Indiana. He authored a very similar bill last year. It made it through the House but never got through the Senate. Well, they were confused and they said, well, first of all, if there's 500,000 of these a year and we catch every one, and they did the math, and they said, well, that's a lot of money. This bill, centered around fines, has only been introduced. But one in the state Senate has passed a committee. It's focused on more severe misdemeanor charges. Under this bill, a bus driver's report is enough to charge an offender. They could then uh, be cited without the police officer actually seeing the event. So ultimately, where it would come down to is, is a person would go before a, a judge, if you will, just as they would in any other situation, and, and the judge would, uh, you know, hear, hear both sides of the case and then make a determination. I think you're going to have a difficult time enforcing that is my concern. Richard says using a bus driver's report or pictures will be a tough sell for a judge. Your misdemeanor is going to be very tough to prove and then it has to go through our office and the probable cause has to get found by the judge before we can even arrest somebody. And a judge is not going to find probable cause under those circumstances. And when it comes to mailing tickets based on pictures of someone's license, Richards thinks those could possibly be unconstitutional. Who are you going to charge if you can't identify the driver? You can't give a ticket to a car. You're giving the ticket to the driver and you have to be able to figure out who the driver is. 
in any married household, you've got two people that drive a motor vehicle. Who are you going to cite? The husband, the wife, the grown child that drives the car, the grown child's friend who drives the car. Nobody wants to see something bad happen to a child. And people obviously need to be more careful. And I think the desire is to catch people's attention by punishing people that break the law. You just need to remember when you do that that we do have a constitution and we have a set of rules and whatever law you make has to follow through with all those things. So which, if any, option do you think would be the best solution? We've created a poll on Wayne.com where you can weigh in. As we've reported recently, Fort Wayne Community Schools has cut bus routes as part of a $2.5 million budget deficit in the Transportation Department. When asked about the stop harm bill's potential to save lives and bring in more money, FWCS leaders told me they'll take a look at the option if the bill passes. 15 Finds Out will continue to follow each of these bills and will update you with any developments as soon as those become available. All right. Thank you, Adam.